Hello everyone, it's Bernard here and I've been wanting to make a video for some time now and since today is actually a perfect weather, I thought why not just go out and shoot some video with anamorphic lens and I can explain you what an anamorphic lens is and what it can actually do. So without further ado, let's just go out and shoot something. So many people believe that all that anamorphic lens does is simply to add black bars to the top and the bottom of the image, which isn't true because what anamorphic lens does in fact is to wider the field of view, allowing to capture a wider perspective. Okay, so I'm back in the studio after shooting, and by studio I mean a small living space. I obviously can't afford a huge, well-lit and sound-isolated place, and I have some sample footage. Now, before we continue, I must say that this isn't by any means a paid review. So I bought this lens with my very own hard-earned money. Now, if you want to buy this lens for yourself, there is a link in the description below, so enjoy. Okay, back on track. We already saw what the anamorphic lens does, so that's a start. And here is the lens itself. So, as we can see, this isn't a typical lens at all, and the fact that it's made for smartphones isn't the reason. You see, anamorphic lens requires the squared look to work because of how it distorts light and this image. Unlike fisheye or wide angle in general, it only adds vision to the size of the frame, so it can record more of the image and funnel it to the sensor. Pretty simple, but cool. It was used originally with film, so it was mm, way more useful back then, but I think that the effect is still both useful and great looking on modern smartphones. You see, in addition to fitting more of a scene in the frame, anamorphic lens creates this unique look, of which black bars and white aspect ratio are only a part. Because anamorphic lens distorts the image and compresses wider shot into narrower frame, it has to be decompressed or simply stretched back. And while with regular object it's generally harmless, it does funny things with light and bokeh. Bokeh does, uh, are for example recorded quite normally, but then stretched creating oval bokeh, unlike circular or hexagonal ones on typical cameras. But probably even more eye-catching and are the lens flares. Yes, those J.J. Abrams far favorite light stripes that go across the frame are very strong and visible here. They obviously change depending on the light and in harsh light you can see those blue lines while in softer lights they tend to create more reasonable flares. You may like them, you may hate them, but they are here to stay because they are an off product of the lens itself. They are not artificially added stuff that you can change in post, they are real and many people love them, me included, because they show that you have some sort of exotic filming tool. And even though they are originally a side effect, they are often the major reason many people will go for anamorphic lens in the first place. Okay, now to the one downside of the anamorphic lens, the loss in resolution. Or maybe not in resolution exactly, because you stay with the original resolution while enlarging the view, resulting in some small quality loss. It is only visible in the sides, but you can't fool the physics and if you have 1080p to 1920p recorder and you want to fit more into it, the image will be stretched like an Xbox One game on HDTV. You might not notice it, but it's something worth remembering. For me personally, this isn't a downside, if you remember about it and do proper composition, it just adds to the anamorphic look and makes people go, wow, nice camera, isn't it a shallow depth of field? To which I reply, yes, this is exactly what it is. Seriously though, this low resolution doesn't look like a cheap camera because again it's a byproduct of a high quality glass and it can really look dreamy. Okay, so it all sounds good, but should you even consider anamorphic lens for yourself? Well, honestly I think yes, and what's more I think buying such a lens for your smartphone may be even a better idea than for your camera, 
because first of all, Moment lens is much, much more affordable than anamorphic lens for the bigger shooters. While 149 US dollars isn't maybe cheap, it is still a good price for such high quality and unique features you get. This lens will guarantee that your footage will stand out in the crowd and it's just fun to play with. Here, I just shot and edited very quick coffee b-roll with it. It isn't the best bureau in the world, but I did it in about 15 minutes by myself using only iPhone, DJI Mobile Free Gimbal and Moment Anamorphic Lens. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you like the Moment Anamorphic Lens, just remember that uh, you need to have a Moment case for it, which is actually a good thing because I bought this thing for my iPhone 10, and when iPhone 11 came out I simply bought a new case for it and it was ready to go. The cases are available both for iPhones and selected Android devices like all the Samsung Galaxy phones, Pixel phones, uh, as far as I remember the OnePlus phones. So yeah, just check the links in the description below and find one for yourself. I, I really think that this is one of the most fun accessories you can buy for your phone currently and for the price I really think it, it is worth it. The quality is, is really fantastic. Like. It's, it's regular lens but for your phone and also anamorphic one still isn't present in all those high-end five camera systems and whatnot so it is something unique that will make your your photos you know stand out so you can even buy one for your galaxy note 20 ultra 5g something yeah so thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one and remember to subscribe.